What is the big society in, in general? But it's a more specific question looking at, at what it actually is. So what do we understand by the term? Do the general public actually understand it? And are there better terms we could use? And perhaps, um, taking up something that, that Peter was talking about, perhaps we ought to be talking about more of a civil society or a civil economy. Um, so those are four questions I'd quite like to sort of come back to when we get to the discussion <coughs> stage of things. Um, I, I did manage to dig up some definitions on the big society, and I think Peter's articulated what some of the problems are in terms of the terminology. Um, but first of all, we're looking at a society <coughs> with a much higher level of personal, professional, civic and uh, corporate responsibility. A society where people come together to solve problems and to improve life for themselves and their communities. And a society where the leading force of progress is social responsibility, not state control. And I think that's possibly where Peter and I will begin to differ. The big society was very much a conservative concept that they put together, but as part of the coalition agreement, it has become a, a, a key agreement between the two parties. And I think what was also interesting about what Peter was saying is that there is actually agreement on the Labour side that there is a concept that we need to look at here and that there should be more community engagement. Where we are going to differ, of course, is, is, is Peter's remarks about this is a smoke screen for, for a series of cuts that are going to come in and hit, hit the lower um, um, uh, income earners in society. Um, I think that probably indicates that, you know, uh, particularly that the Labour Party are very suspicious of this concept and this umbrella. And it was quite interesting that Matthew Taylor, um, who is the chief executive of the, of the Royal Society of Arts, but obviously was in, in, in the Downing Street machine many years ago, actually said that Labour needs to bite the bullet on this. And it's, you know, it's very reassuring to hear Peter actually say, you know, and, and illustrating the fact that, you know, there is a history of this kind of activity here in Leicester in particular, but also in the wider area. Um, what is interesting is, although it, it's been a conservative sort of um, uh, mantra that they've come up with, ministers in most of the government departments with responsibility for delivering the big society are actually Liberal, liberal Democrats. I'm not quite sure how that worked out, but that's, that's, that's what's happened, basically. Um, but clearly, what they're articulating is giving communities more power and encouraging people to take a more active role in their uh, communities. And again, that's something that's been going on for a long time, as Peter said, and I think, I think that's a very good point. But I think where we do differ is this issue of transferring power from central to local government. And we, we must encourage that kind of activity. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a, a tremendous fan of localism. And one of the things that got me involved in, in politics in the first place, and, and here again, Peter and I are going to agree, was the Iraq war. Because as somebody who's worked as an arms control inspector, I knew exactly, um, and having worked at Porton Down with some of the people who did the arms control inspections, I know quite a lot about the subject. But I'm not here to talk about that today. Um, what I am interested in is, is, is decentralisation. Um, and uh, Kevin was quite right to refer to my work in Russia. I went to work in Russia for the European Union in 1992, just as the Soviet Union came to an end. So I've seen what centralisation does. I've seen what happens when a system breaks down. And I think the key thing from my point of view is I want to see more empowerment of local people. And that's why I actually am a fan of what, what's being talked about in terms of the big society. What I'm not so keen on is the actual term. I think we can find better terms for it. But again, I shall, I shall take some feedback from you guys and see what you think. I think the key point that we need to look at is who can get involved. I mean, and Peter's already articulated voluntary sector organisations. Um, we've looked at local communities and partnerships. Um, social enterprises, which is particularly the area that I'm interested in, and I, I was just talking to your, to your vice chair just a minute ago about that. Um, we also need to look at healthcare and social care providers. Um, I know there's quite a lot of interesting work going on with social enterprises, particularly in the delivery of healthcare and social care. The other issue that, that Matthew Taylor highlighted, which um, again was quite interesting, was this uh, concept. They, the RSA have just done a very good study on connected communities, and they're trying to work out how we can actually connect communities in a more effective way. And I'm not talking about Facebook and Twitter and all of the, the social networking side of things, but actually doing the physical contact, working together, devising new programs, working in partnership, that kind of thing. What he did say, or that, what they've said in their report, is that traditional approaches have actually failed to deliver on key social capital improvements. And you know there are areas that we should be working together with organisations that have a similar uh, ethos to try and actually bridge those communities and get some more connectivity going on. Um, 
The RSA are particularly arguing for a new approach to community regeneration uh, based on an understanding of the importance of social networks. And again, I think that's something that universities can particularly get involved with because um, not just through the, the younger people, but also through academics such as myself coming out and doing things, events like this, but actually talking to people, working in partnership with projects, um, either uh, you know, seeking to work with commercial partners or possibly look, looking to work with public sector partners. Efforts to build the big society, the RSA argue, such as training community organisers and initiatives that are aimed at increasing membership community groups, should draw heavily on social network analysis. So that's one of the, the key things that we should be doing, is actually analysing social networks and work out how they work. Um, many years ago in my naval career, when I was, uh, before I started learning Russian, I did systems analysis and design, which was going into, into organisations and trying to work out whether you could improve systems by introducing new information technology programmes and things like that. Um, Systems analysis has now moved on since then, but I think this idea of social network analysis is really important. And we need to be looking into our communities and working out how the social networks, how the community networks actually function. And I think the key point from my point of view is social enterprises. Social enterprises are really the key to this as far as I'm concerned. And these are obviously created in many different ways with a diversity of governance and legal structures. But they use the power of business to address some of society's most pressing challenges. And the social purpose is central to everything that they do. And they reinvest a majority of their profits back into the business so they can develop more social activities, more programs. And I, I was very uh, taken with a, a presentation I, I, I heard from a social enterprise working in the West Midlands that was delivering health and social care and how many more services they were able to provide by reinvesting the profits from what they were doing before. And I think that's, that's the key driver. The other thing to remember, in the UK at the moment, um, there are around 62,000 social enterprises contributing over 24 billion to the UK economy, employing around, around about 800,000 people. And that's an amazing statistic, which I wasn't aware of, and I think you know, we need to bear that in mind. And they operate in almost every sector of British industry, retail, recycling, the arts, employment, health and social care, renewable energy, fashion, sport, housing and education. So they cover the whole gamut of activities. So what about the future? Well, we've already had some discussion about um, the comprehensive spending review, what's going to happen um, in terms of, of, of the cuts that are being proposed. At the moment, you know, we're all basically on, on tenterhooks waiting for, for the announcement in the next couple of weeks. We do know some of what's going to happen, as Peter's already alluded to, but basically in the university sector and many other public sectors, we're waiting to see what the results of those, those discussions and those negotiations are. So what next? New opportunities for the voluntary sector um, in the delivery of local, uh, local public services is obviously a key thing. We, we don't know yet what kind of a big society is being proposed in terms of how we can actually engage in, in, the, in the local public sector, but there will be new partnership opportunities with healthcare, particularly, and social care providers. And I think what the other question we probably need to think about is how are these going to work against the backup, backup of these public sector spending cuts that Peter was referring to earlier. I don't have any answers to that. I'm not involved in, in the government, so I can't give you any feedback on that particular issue. But what I will say, as somebody who works in the public sector, in higher education. We are actually looking upon this as an opportunity to get more engaged with the community, to do more projects, not just in the social area, but particularly in the social enterprise area, and possibly linking in with private sector, public sector, and third sector, voluntary sector, community sector organisations. I think I'll probably uh, draw my remarks to, to a, a close there, and, and hopefully we can open this out to, into a more broad-reaching uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Okay.